this part of the legal research program, we're looking at the role of theory and how theory actually forms a very important tool for you to use in the research process. And we're going to start by having a look at the theory of rule of law as a very convenient and useful legal theory that we can apply in a lot of different research projects. I mean, maybe one that we can probably apply in every legal research project. So first of all, I will talk about what rule of law is, uh, give you a quick rundown as quick as I possibly can, and then we'll have a look at why it's important and what that means for legal researchers. All right, so what is rule of law? It's the proposition that society is governed by an orderly system of rules, not the whims and caprices of the rulers. The expression, the rule of laws, not men, um, is one that goes back to the very origins of the idea. And this is the idea that decisions are made and judgment is made based on pre-existing laws. It's not just a matter of a king or a prime minister or a president or an administrator or a dog catcher saying, I'm doing this because this is what I want. They actually have a legal structure in which they operate. And the alternative perspective is tyranny. And tyranny is when it's decisions are made purely on the whims of individuals. Now, rule of law is something that is so embedded in our way of thinking that it is often difficult to perceive it. Often, we just assume that's the way society operates. We assume society should function on an orderly legal way. But that hasn't always been the case. Uh, one of the great achievements of the Qin Emperor, the first emperor of China, was to introduce a very specific form of rule of law to the warring states of China. And this particular version was probably one of the more extreme versions in history. Um, and it goes by under the title of legalism. And it was an absolute form of rule of law where there was no discretion at all and no consideration of individual circumstances. And it ended up being pretty much as tyra tyrannical as um, having individual whims making decisions. And it's certainly a different approach to what we use. And in, in China, this then became moderated by Confucianism. But that's a whole different story again. So our idea of rule of law is not just absolute fidelity to a pre-existing set of laws, but it's also the idea of discretion, that discretion sits within there, that there is a role for judgment, a role for mercy, a role for perspective and individual circumstances. Where rule of law becomes important is usually where it starts to slip away. And around the world, we see situations where nations begin to slide into chaos. And the first thing that comes under attack is rule of law. And we see the same symptoms occurring time and time again. We see a breakdown of accountability of public bodies, particularly in the military, security forces and policing forces, where there is no longer transparency, there is no longer proper oversight and checks and balances on what these bodies do. We see a move towards arbitrary executive decision making. So rather than being a proper democratic process moderated by the legislative process in decision making, we see more and more power being gathered into the executive and more and more power being gathered into the heads of government that they can exercise in their own discretion. And they form these little pockets where they can act outside of rule of law where they can no longer have to be accountable for what they do, and they create these de decision-making bubbles where things are purely up to the discretion of the minister or the prime minister or the, or the president. We also see the attacks on rule of law take the form of a kind of a populism, a kind of a, a mob rule. And this is a masquerade where people say, um, you know, most people want blah, blah. They want more severe penalties for crimes. They want this to happen. Therefore, we should just do it. That the legal system gets in the way. Uh, that we, 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 just need, we just need a mass popular movement. And that, I mean, people talk in terms of democracy, but a deliberative democracy involves rule of law. It involves a process. It involves checks and balances. So sometimes the attacks take the form of what appear to be the sort of democratic movements, but they're not democratic at all. They're about mob rule and about angry mobs being able to do what they want. And again, this is one of those signs that society is starting to crumble. The attacks on rule of law also take the form of attack on the institutions of law, on things like due process, on the idea of rights. Uh, we see increasing attacks on lawyers themselves. Um, in uh, William Shakespeare's 
Henry the Sixth, Part Two, there's a character called Dick the Butcher, who says the first thing we do is we kill all the lawyers. Um, he's a particularly vile, horrible person. But he recognises that the way to assume power is to get rid of those people who would be a check and balance on tyranny, which are the lawyers. And we see that again and again. And when I'm recording this video, we've, we've just seen a senior federal minister say that lawyers who defend people who that person doesn't like are un-Australian. Uh, and unfortunately, it's a very common pattern that we see these overall attacks on the institutions of justice, on the members of the justice professions, and it, these are attacks on rule of law itself. Um, a couple of examples briefly from the recent Australian context, and I've picked a couple from different points of politics, but one of course is the refugee crisis and the moves to have more and more decision making being made by executive officers, not through the courts where they belong, under this idea that there is a security or a, um, a, a national borders crisis involving refugees. And a lot of that has involved direct attacks on rule of law. But we also see in issues like Twitter shaming, situations where people want to um, usurp the due process, where people want to be judged and shamed for various actions that are seen as um, not, not politically the right action, without any form of trial, without natural justice, without the right to defend themselves. So it's not just the right wing that attacks rule of law. We also can see people who express themselves in progressive ways, express themselves as being opposed to something like sexual harassment, but then post accusations in a forum where someone can't defend themselves against those accusations and see that as a legitimate way to exercise power. So poor old rule of law is under attack from all sides at the moment. Now, why is the rule of law important? Well, without rule of law, we don't have a firm, and without the idea and the theory, we don't have a firm position from which to defend against these attacks. Tyranny is usually the easiest, quickest approach to any problem. Absolute executive power, uncontained, unfettered, untransparent power, makes a quick and sometimes appealing solution to a problem. But it's not the right problem, and it's not the it's not the exercise of power. It's not the right exercise of power, and it's not the right exercise of power done in the correct way. And that's what rule of law requires. And this is often the frustration with rule of law: is that it is seen as slow and conservative, and something which is which is not as agile as tyranny. And that's good reasons for that. That's part of the reason of we have a, a legal system is to slow everything down, and to actually make sure things happen in a proper deliberative sense. The concept of rule of law allows us to separate the legitimate exercise of power, whether or not we agree with the outcomes, with the illegitimate exercise of power, which, regardless of what the outcome is and whether we agree with it, is not done in the correct way, in the correct form. It is not done in a way that is consistent with a deliberative democracy. And this is an issue, I think, that gets muddied quite a lot in the public view. And increasingly, people like outcomes that agree with them and are willing to rationalise away a process which does not observe rule of law as long as they agree with the outcome for themselves. That's a very short-sighted way of seeing things. And of course, once rule of law breaks down completely, people only really have themselves to blame if they've contributed to the erosion of rule of law. So one of the things we do through training you as lawyers is to be able to take that long view and to be able to be conscious of the difference in any particular debate between the outcome and the process and being able to focus particularly on whether the process was done correctly. And we see it again and again in political debates. And uh, it's our part of our role as lawyers is to inform people of the importance of not only justice being done, but justice being done in the correct way. In the correct through the correct processes. Now, rule of law has been criticised as, as something that's conservative, as something that protects the status quo. Um, and a lot of these criticisms, I think, occurred in a t occur in times when societies are more comfortable and uh, don't don't feel as much at risk. And it's very easy to say, well, all rule of law does is protect the interests of the 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 rulers. It protects the interests of um uh, of the people who already benefit from the status quo. The problem is that if you, if you then use that as justification to erode the idea of rule of law, is that 
once the system starts to collapse, a lot of those are those finer points of political ideas will collapse with it. And, you know, we we exist at the moment, I think, in a, in a point where we see ourselves as relatively secure, but in peril of, of falling into anarchy. And we see those edges of irrationality around society, and we see points at which we think, well, it could it could happen to us. We can't be complacent, and that's the, those are the times where shoring up the, the, our faith in the system. And it doesn't mean not being critical of the system, but it means protecting the system becomes very very important, because when changes happen, they can happen quite dramatically. I mean, and quite quickly, the Roman Empire thought it was very secure up until the point that the barbarians appeared at the gates. So this is rule of law. It's, it's the fundamental notion of why law exists. It's a theory. It's a way of seeing the world. It's a principle, and then it organises the way in which we approach law. And it's a governing um, principle by which we can organise our thoughts. Uh, and in that way, it's sort, of, it's sort of a meta law. It's a law of law, how we can understand how law works. And it also functions as a rule. So, for instance, in administrative law, it has specific functions about the, gov the regulation of government action. So rule of law has a lot of different characteristics. It's a theory, it's a principle, and it's a rule in, our, in different circumstances. It's where rule of law as a theory applies that becomes useful to us as um, researchers. And here are some brief examples of where it can be useful as an analytical tool. First of all, it becomes a very useful tool to understand pragmatic calls for action or for things that seem simple. Uh, when people say, you know what we have to do, we just have to round up all the bad people and we have to kick them out of the country, or we put them in camps, or whatever we do. Now that's an attack directly on rule of law, which without that as a foundation, we might be, it might be more difficult to defend because it might seem more, the, mo the most practical way to do things. And even in less extreme circumstances, where you see the expansion of law into areas where, or expansion of powers into areas of which the, the, the they never existed, unless you can constantly critique that from a rule of law perspective, you don't have a method for which you can then say, well, has this gone beyond the rule of law, and are we now looking at the rule of man? Are we actually looking at giving all these powers away to someone who's exercising discretion that aren't controlled or contained by law? And I think a flip side of this argument is, from a research perspective, is that you can use rule of law as a response to criticisms about the inefficiencies of law. So a strictly pragmatic situation says, well, we're spending too much time sentence in, 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 in legal process. We should be able to issue um, sentences to people on the spot. Uh, we should have a more kind of Judge dread style police state where police can go out and, and administer punishment straight away. Um, because the justice system is too inefficient. Well, rule of law says, well, it may be inefficient, but we need to have it. And sure, it can be. We can find ways of making our system work better, but we don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. We don't throw out the protection of law simply because it's easier, simpler, or quicker, um, or even possibly more effective to um, implement power in a more direct way. It also gives us a way of understanding the ideas of the thin edge of the wedge or regulatory creep, where something seems like, well, we're uncomfortable with it, but we accept this as a, a temporary measure. We accept there should be more executive powers given to a prime minister or a president. But rule of law helps us understand the history by which that is often used as a wedge. That's often used as the point where more and more powers can slowly be gathered uh, under under that rationale, and it's the it's the breach point of which from which tyranny re-enters the system, and it's the point for which it's very easy to creep over to more and more power being accrued, and we've seen that historically in lots of areas where, again, power is allocated without checks and balances to to regulatory authorities, and just they just get a little bit more, a little bit more all the time, and soon you know they're, they're these these bodies are out of control. Rule of law also provides us with a perspective where we can argue for the transparency of justice, where we can argue the importance of the courts, particularly the idea of public courts as an institution of justice, and we can argue for the importance of lawyers as the, as the guardians and custodians of justice in society.
So it's not just self-aggrandizing. It's not just a matter of saying we're lawyers and we're fantastic. But it's a matter of recognizing that as lawyers, we have a very important role and responsibility to resist these sorts of changes, to resist tyranny. And finally, one thing I think is great about rule of law is that it's one thing that almost all lawyers can agree on regardless of their political differences. So at the end of the day, you can have people from vastly disparate backgrounds who have vastly different ideas about the way in which law should be created, let alone the outcomes, what are fair outcomes for the legal process. But almost all of us will agree that rule of law is something that, that should be observed. And anything that breaches that rule of law is a fundamental problem for a whole lot of people. So I hope that discussion around rule of law gives you a better sense of the way in which a theory is not just something that sits statically by itself. It's something that you can use as an active tool to um, create the foundation of a research project. And from there, you move on to developing that further and to actually creating a, a, um, a theoretical backbone that structures and creates the order within your research project. And there's another video on that topic. Mm -hmm.